Okay, hello everybody. Um, it's Steve Anderson here, pharmacist at the Apothecary Pharmacy in Sartell. And um, you can probably tell that we're not at the pharmacy now. So we had a little change of venue here tonight. Um, part of it is the, uh, um, as we all know, the, the sanctions and um, shelter at home scenario that's going on in Minnesota and, and gathering restrictions and such. So, um, so tonight we're in my library and we're holding it here. Um, so, um, so welcome those that are, have joined us here. Uh, thank you for taking the time out of your day to, um, you know, come here to learn more about, um, low dose naltrexone is, will be the subject here. So, you know, just since we're, uh, um, just at home here and I just got my wife and kids hanging around and no audience and stuff. So it'll you know, be a little different than our normal meetings and such too, where people are there and we have some questions and answers and such. So I'm not much for uh, PowerPoints and, and things of that nature and a real formal type of structure too. I just really prefer it more to kind of be a little more open and question and answer and a little more casual things. I just, that's just preferable to me. So, you know, that allows people to, um, you know, ask questions about things that are relevant to them, um, you know, which in turn ends up being, you know, probably relevant for most other people as well. So I believe, uh, and then just to let you know, um, we'll, um, you know, you can send in questions um, if you have any that you'd like us to talk about tonight and and then just and, and even if you don't do that um, you know certainly you can call us anytime at the pharmacy if you have any questions on anything whatsoever call us there that might be a, a, a little better way to do it or um, you know on our Facebook page you can message us as well if you have a, a more of a private message and such um, you could contact us through either way of that too so so it's not like we're limited to the next you know, however long we're here tonight, half an hour to hour where you have to get the question or else, um, you know, you've, you've lost the chance. So that's, that's not it whatsoever. Um, so I guess, um, you know, why, why are we having these meetings? Um, and, um, you know, I, I guess it's just, uh, it's just to share, uh, information on, um, uh, a treatment option for, pretty much any condition is what we're finding and you know practitioners and patients across the United States certainly and and Europe as well um, they're having success with utilizing and prescribing low dose naltrexone um, you know for really pretty much any condition on the surface I think a lot of people are familiar with its use for uh, inflammation and pain um, so um, you know it's utilized and it has been for um, upwards of 20 years is is when uh, up to almost 30 years ago I guess we would say that um, it first came became uh, evident that uh, the naltrexone in the lower doses has some interesting effects um, so you know they pretty much use it for any uh, autoimmune condition um, and there's studies on there's there's a lot of research on it there's plenty of studies on it um, but um, you know it's not it's not in the traditional literature um, we don't read about it in the medical journals and such and uh, you know as such a lot of medical practitioners in their offices they're you know it's not made by a drug company so they're not um, they're, they're not provided with the information on this therapy and this medication and the uses that it has. Um, you know, there's no sales reps that are able to um, access the information to them. You know, that's you know, kind of the normal um, uh, line of transfer of information in the, in the you know, healthcare field. Um, so, uh, you know, um, so we're just here to, tonight just to, um, you know, again, it'll probably be a little shorter meeting tonight, but just to share some of the things that we're seeing, um, some of the dosing parameters that uh, are evolving with uh, low-dose naltrexone. 
Um, just even within the last couple of years, there's been a lot of great inroads in some of the um, understanding of low dose naltrexone and um, and uh, and expanding um, idea of the uh, you know conditions and therapies that can be uh, um, addressed by it. Um, you know, it's, you know, and which you kind of, you probably find in a lot of fields uh, of well, medicine for certain, you know, as more and more practitioners become aware of it and uh, you utilize it in more and more of their patients, um, you know, they, they, you know, begin to see some trends and uh, um, occurring that, uh, um, you know, some are expected, some are unexpected, um, you know, both positive and negative. And, you know, just to, you know, as you get this group of practitioners, more and more of them collaborate, go into meetings and conferences and seminars, exchanging information, um, what they're learning in their particular practice with their particular patients. And, you know, they would be, they share their, um, you know, their, uh, um, the highlights and the successes they're having, but you know, they also um, discuss the, um, the not as successful uh, approaches and, and patients that they have. And, and you know, they'll say, well, you know, what do you do in this circumstance? What else should I look for in this? Should I, is there any other um, you know, strategies you know, that I could utilize in, in my patients to address these circumstances that aren't responding? as well as we'd like. And so with all those practitioners doing that, um, putting their heads together and, uh, you know, synergizing their ideas, they find, uh, um, you, you know, they start to think about different things and, and come up with different ideas on dosing strategies and, and they utilize it with the low dose naltrexone. Um, the one thing that, uh, that is, is really beneficial there, they, they really don't have any issues with uh, you know, experimenting, I guess you could say, or uh, adjusting things um, with, uh, um, on the dosage and stuff, because, you know, technically, for the most part, there's really no side effects with a low-dose naltrexone. You know, we've, we've attended conferences over the last few years, uh, um, presented by some of the leading experts in low-dose naltrexone and its use um, from across the world and um and sharing their experiences and you know when they're asked you know what are the side effects they kind of shrug their shoulders and go yeah, you know there really isn't a whole lot of is side effects with it um initially uh, probably about the uh, um or, you know it doesn't happen to a large degree but some of the uh, the initial uh, uh issues that could happen when people first start on it uh and it depends on the starting dose too it typically um, with the practitioners we work with and they're prescribing um, um, protocols, we start um, on a really low level too. So by doing that, that even lessens the likelihood of these not very common side effects um, to begin with. Um, so when people start with it, the uh, um, uh, one of the main things is maybe a little gastrointestinal upset or, or a little queasy stomach or such. You know, one of the things, that the low dose naltrexone does. It's essentially it's it's uh, um, because of its work on the immune system and it's you know so it's kind of pushing the immune system to start to try and do a better job. Um, so there's a, a little bit of a detox detoxification type scenario going on is is what they believe. So just uh, so part of the little queasiness and upset stomach will happen with that just as it just started. It seems like it's kind of pushing things and moving the immune system to uh, start to uh, respond better to things. Uh, but that's, it's uh, usually pretty transient and pretty minor and it does go away. It's not, it doesn't persist. Uh, the other thing is uh, it may disrupt sleep a little bit. Um, we're finding there's, there's some things you can do to address that. Uh, one is to uh, take it earlier uh, instead of at bedtime, take it earlier in the day and and some of the new dosing protocols are really some of the more common dosing strategies that we're seeing is a twice a day dose on that. So there'd be a morning dose and the second dose would, if tr causing trouble with some of the sleep issues, you would take it uh, earlier in the day, take it at supper time. Um, so, so what is it that uh, um, LDN does then? Um, 
Well, the main uh, uh, effect that it has, probably the biggest move that it makes on the system is it really increases the endorphin mainly and the enkephalin level, enkephalin levels in the body. And, and these have to do with, you know, I think maybe most of us have heard of endorphins. That's, that's really our body's own natural pain relieving type things. It's, it's our, like our body's own morphine um, you know, tra or, or molecule, so to speak. So it helps with that. And, um, you know, so that part we know. It also has very good benefits they're finding and based on some of the different dosing strategies on mood and mental health and brain health and anxiety and things, uh, um, um, scenarios like that. Um, but it also uh, has an effect on the immune system. It, uh, the, the increasing endorphin levels will have positive effects on modulating the immune system, um, you, you know, in, in numerous different ways. And it gets kind of technical on some of the, you know, the different pathways and such such, but, um, you know, they've identified, uh, at least a couple of different anti-inflammatory, um, uh, molecules, um, uh, as part of the immune system that it increases or, you know, restores a better balance of the anti-inflammatory agents or versus the pro-inflammatory or causing anti-inflammatory agents. So, so it'll lessen the the agents causing inflammation and increase the anti-inflammatory aspects of um, the immune system, um, which is an important part. You know, inflammation is really probably involved with most of health things. You know, of course, you know, we have the arthritis and the fibromyalgia and the multiple sclerosis and the lupus and those sorts of things. But, um, you know, the gastrointestinal scenarios, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, inflammation, you know, allergies, that's an autoimmune type condition as well. Uh, psoriasis, um, some of the dermatologic things, um, you know, acne, it's inflammation, redness and inflammation. Uh, so, you know, and these are all um, scenarios that they are, uh, uh, practitioners of different specialties are prescribing for their patients with all these conditions. Um, and in, in our pharmacy and in, in Sartell we're you know we're seeing prescriptions for for all these different conditions so um, you know so the question you know kind of is uh, you know we've always heard uh, you know always growing up well hey, you know if it's too good to believe um, you know it can't be true and you, you know there's an aspect of this that it just it there's it's doing all these things that it almost is too good to believe that this is true but it's, it's being seen, you know, there's studies showing it. Uh, there's uh, currently, now there's over 1300 PubMed articles on the uh, naltrexone and the use of naltrexone um, for, I don't even know the exact number, there's a hundred different conditions I think that they've, that they've had effects on and, uh, um, you know, and they're, and they're adding, there's, you know, more studies coming out almost every month. You see a new one on some different condition coming out. So, um, you, you know, and, and, and I, I should just say at the conferences we go to, uh, the practitioners that are presenting the doctors on the stage and, you know, in the audience, you have practitioners, there's pharmacists, there's all doctors from all kinds of specialties out there um, asking questions, uh, you know, in the question and answer session is like, um, you know, doctor is, okay, this sounds great. How would low dose and naltrexone work for this condition? You know, and, uh, or how would it work for this condition is all the different diagnoses and such. And pretty much the doctors in their response would say, um, why not try it? You know, I mean, it's, it's uh, there's really no side effects. It's not very expensive and uh, doesn't interfere with any other medications um, other than opioid drugs. And, um, you know, there's, uh, you know, so for instance, if there's some kind of unusual gastrointestinal situation or some unusual dermatologic um, condition that's not real common, um, but, you know, the answer would be, well, it has very good effects. Um, and 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 successes with 
ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Those are um, kind of the most uh, um, troublesome, you know, on the far end of the spectrum gastrointestinal symptoms or conditions. Uh, so certainly something that isn't as troublesome or isn't as, um, um, you know, both then people have extremely inflamed, you know, basically raw, you know, gastrointestinal lining. Um, if it can deal with that, it certainly could deal with this. Or, and you know, even to the extreme, if you look at the literature, and there's it, it is out there, and they are using it even in the uh, um, in the in the realms of the cancers in oncology use. So there, with its effect on the immune system and all these different factors, you know, the literature is showing that um, there is successes in. You know, you know, and nothing works 100% in anything, but there are successes in, in a range of uh, different oncology type situations too, and um, some, you know, some very surprising actually. So, so, um, and, and again, that that's kind of with that with that in mind. Um, you know, the question is, uh, again, presented to the doctors at the conference on the stage, is like, well. Um, you know, how long do you have to take this? You know, what, um, you know, what would be your, your answer to that? Or, um, you know, or is it safe to take long term? And, you know, the answer is, yeah, yes, it is safe. Um, and, um, you know, the doctor's response to that is uh, typically, um, you know, backtrack one second, you know, they all note that they're all, all the doctors are taking it, even the young, healthy ones that are younger that have no issues because their belief is if, if it's maintaining and controlling their inflammation throughout their body, and that's really the root of most, if not all health conditions, why not take it? Why wait till you know, the body degrades or gets, you know, gets to the point where you begin to have all kinds of trouble and then just you know, fight upstream backwards to get better? Why not just take it and, and stay as a preventative therapy and take it? And that's, that's what many of, pretty much any, you know, person that's done any, um, uh, you know, investigation or study into it, you know, that's their belief. So, you know, their answer would be, how long would you take it? They say, take it forever, you know, take it to the rest of your life. It's, you know, as it's, as it's working on the immune system, keeping inflammation down, it has mental health aspects. So people have better mood, they have better brain energy, they're, their anxiety is better. They just feel better overall, and you know, you know, who doesn't want that? So, um, you know, so that's um, so. In answer to any, you know, anybody's questions is, would this be helpful for this? Um, the answer is, they they would pretty much say, you know, not. There's no study on it, but there's studies on these things that are similar to it with success. So we would believe that you would see the same benefits here because you know it's still working on the immune system in the same way that it that it did when it benefited these other circumstances that have already been studied so um and uh so anyway i think there's a couple of questions um that have come in Okay, somebody was uh, um, inquiring about the cost of the low-dose naltrexone. Um, there's, there's di what I can tell you, um, there's different, uh, two, probably two different um, scenarios, I guess we'd look at. There are some, some conditions and some protocols where it's just a once-a-day dose, and there's some circumstances and conditions where a, a twice-a-day dose is more beneficial. So. Um, for the once a day dose, uh, the, the one month supply, 30 capsules is, uh, we charge $49. Um, for the twice a day dose, two capsules, um, it's $60. So we just, you know, just in, in interest of keeping the cost relevant and, and uh, affordable. And I know it's, it's, it's out of pocket cost. I know everything just costs much. It's, you know, it's, it's a lot less than, you know, hundreds and hundreds of other medications too, but it, it's still out of pocket, we understand. Um, and if you get a larger supply, uh, the, uh, you know, the cost goes down. If you get a couple months supply, it's, there's, 
there's a lesser amount there and if you get a three month supply it becomes less than that to, to where um, it might be in a three month supply you might be getting down you know less than forty dollars a month um, for the one a day and the two a day um, yeah maybe it's around forty nine or fifty dollars a month so I, I don't recall right off the top of my head um, so but uh, on the other hand um, you know just looking at the whole picture again um, we, you know we have seen um, you know as the as the patients that have been prescribed for their condition most of them you know as you could you know, probably guess are taking a lot of other uh, maybe not a lot but they're taking other medications some a few and some quite a few um, but the uh, you know what we have seen over time is that you know certainly you know there's the cost involved with this but the, you know we have people lowering their doses of other medications and actually moving off medication as they move down the road um you know people end up not you know they end up sleeping better so they don't have to take their sleeping pill anymore um, their pain gets better so they're able to lower their pain dosing and and to, to a lower level um, or get off their headaches get better again they'd have to take you know less medication um, um, you know and the flare-ups are are less frequent and less severe um, you know their antidepressants um, we have those that after a while too they'll lower their dose and then they uh, um, you know they're able to you know keep lowering it and if they are still feeling well on a lower doses they just keep going on and some will move off and some you know in the end they just end up using a uh, you know a lower dose of things so um, and uh, again there's you know you have lesser costs involved with that um, replacing some medications that maybe have side effects are a lot harder on the system with one that's actually um, or, you know technically not much for side effects and is actually improving situations in the body improving the, the ability of the body to deal with inflammation better um, and uh, I, again it, it's touching on all these all these levels and angles so um, part of that also is with um, as it's working on the immune system the and the endorphin levels on the immune system it's uh, you know through a realm I you know I don't know if they know exactly all the details of it they're identifying more things as they're it's being utilized more and they're studying it more it does have positive effects on the endocrine system as we see and so you know the endocrine system would involve the thyroid adrenal gland and you know the ovaries for females and the testes for men and uh, and we're you know in the same vein as that as it's you know enhancing the communications with the endocrine system uh, there are those patients that um, on thyroid medications that you know as they do their testing you know their current thyroid dose becomes um, uh, um, uh, it, you know it's it's higher than they need um, so they're they're able to uh, lower their thyroid dosing on that too because underlying the low dose naltrexone is uh, is just enhancing and just balancing things out better it's just you know so I guess in the end you could say that uh, it's um, kind of opening up pathways clear enough receptor sites you know just enhancing the signaling and communication between the immune system and the other systems in the body including the endocrine system so it just it just starts to work more efficiently so you know their need for additional outside thyroid medication becomes less because of that and it's helping um, 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 it's helping for um, the thyroid as well or I'm sorry and the adrenals as well and um, you know as they're connected to the you know the ovaries or the testes and the thyroid you know those three systems in the endocrine they're you know they affect each other if one is off it can or improves it can have positive or negative effects on the other um, you know glands in the endocrine system so um, you know the adrenals are of all involved a lot with the immune system as well with cortisol levels and such so um, you know so through the immune system it has its positive effects but also through its influence on the adrenals and cortisol levels and such you know that if that starts to um, recalibrate and reset itself um, 
it will be, uh, uh, you know, that'll have positive influence on its ability to, you know, use and work with its cortisol and address inflammation. Um, and also when the adrenals are under stress and, and they're off, it has an effect on so many other things too. I mean, it, that can be part of the, you know, scenario that can be causing anxiety and depression, and it can throw off blood sugar levels, you know, cortisol levels, um, in excess will block insulin and it, you know, so it, the insulin levels get affected and the, in a negative, um, way, whereas, you know, blood sugar levels start to go up. And when that goes up, you know, then you start to gain weight and, uh, you know, it just ends up being kind of a downward spiral of, of negative effects hap happening. Um, and, uh, but, you know, we're also seeing as those begin to take in low dose naltrexone, you know, on its effect on the endocrine, um, as far as the ovaries, um, or the testes as well. So, so in our pharmacy too, we do a lot of, we get a lot of prescriptions to compound the, um, uh, bioidentical hormone therapy. So the estrogen, testosterone, progesterone prescriptions too. And as, as we've been started and we've been, we've been, um, been, you know, um, heavily involved with that for probably over 20 years, but now we're seeing that both, um, you know, with the low dose naltrexone, it's, it just seems that again, with its kind of balancing effect and resetting effect too, people start to do, people start to do, um, um, better, um, you know, on their, on the hormone side of things too, they're, you know, some of them will need lower dosing or the dosing where they've been doing well on the dose they're at, you know, they just, you know, all of a sudden things have improved just a little bit more too. So we're, we're seeing that positive effect that it's have having on all these systems in the body. And, you know, the, and the, you know, as we speak with the patients, as we follow up with them and, and uh, work with them on getting the proper dose for themselves, um, you know, we, we just have reports from all of them for just all these different types of scenarios, um, do, um, um, have the ability to improve and such. So, um, so what, you know, what we're, uh, um, so what dose is the best dose? Um, you know, we, there's, there's no standard dose for anybody. There's no black and white target dose for this is the dose that everybody needs to get their, their best success. Um, it, you know, the best dose for any one of the individual is, is that's, you know, whatever their dose is. So, um, so how do you find that? Um, well, you know, we, um, working with the pr practitioners that we work with, uh, and they're, and they're prescribing on the dosage of it. Uh, we just start low, start on a low dose. Uh, and you know, one thing that, you know, lessens the minimal side effects that could occur initially that lessens that even more. And it just opens up the ability to have, um, better success, um, down the road is, is, is what we've seen. So, you know, if you just, you know, there's the dosing range, the dosing for any one individual ends up being pretty narrow range sometimes too. So, you know, if you start too high, uh, you can miss it for some people. Their best dose would have been a lower dose. And if you start too high, they may not notice any side effects or issues or anything like that, but they just won't notice any benefits and such. So, so kind of the, the evolving strategy for dosing is to, um, start low and taper up slowly. Um, you know, take, it depends on the, the, the condition or diagnosis, um, a little bit. But, um, you know, typically it'll be starting with a dose going for a week or two and then, um, and then increasing it by, you know, that level again for the next week or two and, and, and keep moving up. And, and for some of the circumstances, the twice a day dosing, like we said before, is very beneficial. Um, we'll start adding in a second dose during the day and, uh, um, just, you know, keep moving up and titrating or tapering up the dose till, um, the person gets to the point where they're noticing the, their best improvements in, um, you know, whatever their, um, circumstances or issues are. Um, so, um, you know, as you're moving up and you get to a certain level and, and if the person is saying, gosh, you know, this is really working, I'm really having some good results with this. I'm really happy here. 
you know, that becomes their dose. Um, you know, if they get to a certain point and they're, um, they're still, they, we have a, you know, we hear this quite often where um, they'll say, gosh, this is doing really good. I've had really good improvements on whatever my circumstance was since I started. And um, I'm really happy with this and I'm going to keep taking this. There's no way I'm going off it. Um, and if this is the best I could get, I'd be happy with that. But, you know, if I could get a little better success, a little better improvement, you know, that sure would be nice. So, well, you know, we'd, you would know, continue to titrate the dose, um, at that. And, um, you know, there's no one set way to do it, but, uh, you know, I guess, you know, kind of the pre prevailing thought is if you're, taking a dose and things are well, but you're not quite there yet. It's just, you just have to, you know, keep titrating until you to find that you can, uh, you know, get some better success there um, and at least try it. I mean, I suppose there are those that, um, you know, there's just a certain point that they would get for now, but, um, you know, like we had mentioned earlier, some of the doctors, you know, that would, and you know, recommend taking it, you know, just to stay on it. I mean, it's going to every dose you take, every time you take it, it's going to increase the endorphin levels in the body. So, um, you know, they just believe over time that it'll just, that'll just be a positive push with every dose you take and you just, you know, continue to make progress. It'll be subtle after you've been on it for a while or at least, um, you know, if you keep taking it, you'll still be moving in the right direction or at the worst, not sliding backwards. So um, I guess there's a few other questions that we had. Um, How about heartburn? Just want you to look it up. Okay, so heartburn, um, you know, again, I would, I would relate to that in, you know, it's, it works for people with ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. So, um, you know, the heartburn's a, um, you know, not really too difficult to go after. I mean, you know, we would recommend, um, you know, some over the counter things to look at as well. You know, probably a good probiotic would be part of the underlying thing or some digestive enzymes. You know, there's capsules or tablets of that that you take with meals. That would be, that would probably be our number one recommendation just as an over the counter. But we just had um, uh, one um, person we talked to today, we were following up with them and, uh, had some other issues, but they had had um, uh, heartburn and indigestion and bloating and gas for years and years and years. Um, she's been on, just started on the low dose, been on the naltrexone for not quite two weeks and it's completely gone. Um, we had um, someone yesterday too, uh, um, another with, with the heartburn and some esophageal, um, inflammation um, scenario that they've been fighting with forever and after a couple weeks um, that was gone um, so I mean it yeah, definitely is helpful for that and some of that sometimes um, some of that comes across pretty quickly um, some of the other gastrointestinal or dermatologic things we just know from the research and some of the the data being collected um, say like an ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease or chronic pain, um, maybe a psoriasis or some of the dermatologic things there, you know, there, you know, just to give people ideas, time frames on that, that might be, might be three months, four months, six months on some of those, um, to, you know, before, you know, some appreciable improvements happen. Um, but you know, sometimes that some of those get noticeable improvements within a month or two. So, um, and it's not that it takes six months before, um, the person would notice anything. Um, they would, um, they would, most of the time we notice they feel they're moving in the right direction or, um, you know, part of the other aspects that we talked about of it for as far as being beneficial for brain health, mental health, you know, they might say, um, and this is real common, we're actually, of, the, of those we followed up with in the last year or so, probably, you know, I don't know how many we've seen, maybe 1,500 people have started on it, maybe roughly um, in that ballpark. Um, probably 80% of them within the first month are noticing that they're feeling better. Um, and that's 
you know, that, that would be mostly the, the mood and energy or anxiety and that sort of scenario. That seems to, that seems to come into play um, earlier on, on, and on the lower doses, which is kind of, you know, it's, it's really kind of amazing on that too, because those are usually a lot, a lot tougher to, you know, start addressing. Um, and there's, there's research and study on that well, but that's, that's kind of a, they're, they're, they're really noticing more of that um, in the, you know, just in the last, in the pretty recent future, in the last, in recent past, I should say, in the last couple of years. Um, so it's interesting too, that, I mean, they're, they're finding results, you know, it just, it seems to just have really good brain effects. Um, uh, they're noticing um, improvements in those with ADD and ADHD, um, you know, even some of the autism spectrum type scenarios. Um, there, there's some papers and research out on that too, showing positive moves in, in those um, situations as well. Um, okay. The, um, okay, the question was, um, is it possible to take it three times a day? We do have, um, y you could, um, it could evolve into using it three times a day, a day depending on the circumstances. I mean, typically, um, you, you know, and, and, you know, as I mentioned before, there's, you know, there's, a, um, you, you know, there's not a black and white dosing strategy to uh, that is used that, you know, this is the dosing. But, um, you know, there, there is, is there, it's not willy nilly either. I mean, there is a, there is a general strategy as far as dosing that, that comes up as a, you know, as you look at it, as you, as you need it, uh, as a person needs it, if they're not getting the results they're having as you're tapering up the scale, you know, there is this plan is how to taper it up in the evening, you start moving it up in the morning. Um, what we've noticed for the three times a day dosing is, um, and it's probably usually more in the more um, chronic, you know, the pain situation or maybe anxiety as well, um, where the twice a day dosing, they, the person is taken, they say, gosh, I have good results, um, you know, through the morning into the early afternoon, but then the, the pain or my anxiety um, starts to return in the mid to late afternoon and it just it just doesn't I just don't can't con it's not controlled through my next dose in the evening you know wh what do we do um, and again this is you know just this is where we talked earlier with the doctors at the conferences sharing sharing their successes and and you know less than successful scenarios they you know it's it's evolved from that too they said well why don't we just throw or just uh, prescribe a, a, a low dose, you know, just a small dose at noon or one, you know, preceding the time when they start to fade a little bit. And um, it's been helpful. You know, it just, they just need that little bit extra boost to, to get through to the evening dose. And then that controls their pain or anxiety, whatever their circumstance is um, through the day. You know, I guess we would suspect down the road then as, they're on it and things hopefully move to a better state um, that, you know, they may be able to, you know, lessen their dose on that. And, and, and again, you find out, you know, they may get to that point and move back to twice a day and they may say, hey, this is, I, I, it's, it's covering me through the day. And it's like, well, now we only need it twice a day then. So, um, so that's just, that's just part of the strategy with, you know, the dosing. It just, you just kind of have to, keep up with it. Um, if something changes down the road, if, you know, like we said, when we taper people up and they get to a good dose and they do well, it might be a month down the road, might be three months down the road, six months down the road, they may note that, gosh, you know what? It's just not quite working as well as it did. Um, you know, it has been, you know, and now the thought process on that would be to look at it and say, okay, we just need to you know, just to reevaluate the situation and look at it, look at your dosing and, and make a little tweak in the dosing and to, you know, just to see if we can address that further. You know, I guess we don't know exactly what's going on with that situation too. One of the beliefs, which seems to make sense is that, um, you know, the body probably has layers. You know, if somebody's really been ill and they have some conditions going on, they've probably got layers of, 
of ill health that's been kind of built up over the years and stuff too. So, you know, that, you know, possibly their thought is, again, sort of makes sense that, you know, maybe that dosage that they're on the last couple months kind of cleared out some level of um, the immune system or some scenario that was going on in the body. And now the body's ready to move on to a different level of, of healing and such. So, um, so that's, you know, so we just tell people just, you know, don't take it all of a sudden just say, oh, no, it doesn't work anymore. I'm just going to go off it. You know, it's, it's not working anymore. Um, I guess we feel that would be kind of tragic, you know, considering, you know, what this can do and, you know, really, you know, what are the other options that are available that, you know, that are out there. Um, you know, we just really don't feel that there's that many of them that can have this success or, you know, we would have noticed the success on them before now. Um, okay, another question. Um, how does it work with acid reflux? Okay, we just talked about that. Yeah. So uh, it was how do we how does it work with acid reflux? That would go along with the heartburn and and indigestion and bloating and gas and that sort of thing. Um, what was those other? Okay, just that. We'll check. What's the other questions you have written down there? These you held oh, some up uh, earlier. Could what, you just hold them what up, did please? They say to their doctor? Um. You know, I, I, yeah, because, you know, what we found is, you know, even though the medication has been around for 30 some years, again, it's not in the medical journals. It's not on the, you know, it's not, you know, uh, there's no drug company that makes it. Um, you know, the, the, the usual avenues of information don't include this. Um, so, you know, there's still a high percent of the doctors are, they're all familiar with naltrexone. Um, it's used as a high dose medication is, um, you know, they use that for opioid treatment levels and, you know, that's at 100, 200 milligrams a day level. And this is dosing on this is around one milligram, two milligram, three milligram. So it's just, it's really, nobody really understands exactly. It's kind of a, it was a happy accident that was discovered, you know, probably 30 some years ago. Um, where they started using lower doses of that medication um, um, for those people in opioid treatment centers for, I guess I don't know exactly why they started use, using lower doses at the time. Maybe people were having side effects at the higher doses. And so they started using lower doses, still worked in the, you know, for the opioid or alcohol addiction, but um, they started to notice some interesting things at the lower doses, you know, people were, you know, they were feeling better, their pains, other pains, other than what they're using for, were getting better and such. So, um, you know, a couple of doctors were paying attention and, and notice it again, happy accident on that. So, um, but, um, it's just, you know, the literature's out there. It's not in the traditional realm that you, you really almost have, you have to be looking for it. So, um, you know, so if, uh, you know, so if you, we would say, you know, talk with your doctor, you know, call, you know, we have access to all the research and studies that's out there, um, PowerPoints, information on that. So if the doctor is interested in, in looking at the information and it's, it's pretty, it, it's, it's, you know, the, the, the studies and information are pretty revealing. Um, you know, we would be more than happy to send them a, you know, email them some different studies that they like. We actually have a binder of information that we put together for practitioners that, uh, you know, it's a collection of the research of the science, what it's doing, the, the particular effects it has on the immune system and why it's successful and some of the, you know, the studies and research on it that are, um, that are out there. So we'd start with that. Um, and, um, you know, all the ones that are prescribing it now in our area and, there's a there's a few offices then a few doc, doctors or several that are using it and none of them were aware of it you know a year or two ago and now a lot of them and they are prescribing it you know to you know for many of their patients as they as they read up the literature and they just thought oh gosh you know doesn't seem to there's no issue doesn't seem to be any side effects why not i don't have any other better answer for some of these you know situations that you know we've run into a stall on on improvement. So, um, but you know, if, you know, it's, I would say definitely start with your own practitioner and go with that. Uh, you know, if, you know, if you don't really have a, uh, uh, a regular physician and you're, um, you know, like to have a recommendation on which, 
you know, offices or clinics or doctors that work with us, just give us a call at the pharmacy and, and um, you know, we can talk to you about that. Um, One more question. Okay, so, so, um, so anyway, like I was saying before, hopefully we covered, um, you know, just some of the, some of the basics of it and uh, some of the dosing and uh, um, some of the conditions that you can use it for. Like I said, we'll do one more question here. Um, you know, um, if you have any questions, you can call the pharmacy. Our, our number's on our Facebook page, I believe, but it, I believe 320-251-0107. Uh, you know, of course, we have a Facebook page, and this will be recorded. We have other recordings on there from prior meetings as well, um, and there's messaging on that too. So if you'd like to message us that way and leave a question there, you know, we'll, we'll get back to you on our website there's a, a email address it's uh, uh it's info at the apothecary mn for minnesota.com you can email us and and we'll get back to you as well um so you know so if you don't didn't get a chance to do it tonight um which is fine you know we can talk to you in person as well that would probably be better um okay so there's one last question yep kelly lynn said she's at 4.5 for almost a month and still hasn't noticed any change. How long do you think she should Okay, so, um, so the question was, um, someone is currently on it and they've been on the 4.5 for a month. Um, you know, depending on the circumstance using it for, um, you know, the kind of the general rule of thumb on that 4.5 is that if you look at the research and study over the last 25 years, that's kind of the most standard doser that they've utilized. You know, they, so it's been it's been sort of, I guess, in the past considered the target dose, but now I would say there's no target dose. But that still is what a lot of the research is on, and where a lot of the success has been on that dose. Um, but typically, the thought process is you'll taper up to that dose, and um, even if you haven't noticed anything in a month, they they say give it a another month or two just to give it a chance to um you know create you know to do it start doing its work and start balancing things out and uh then after a couple months there if there's you know still room for improvement then you know you would consider uh tapering the dose what we've been really seeing lately in the uh and, and this is recommendations from some of the the expert leading experts in the field is we, we would probably add in a, a morning dose, a low morning dose after that. And we've had, um, we've had numerous of those that have been on the 4.5 for years, um, for a couple of years and, um, and doing well, you know, they're happy with it, but you know, it could be better. Um, and just with some of this new information coming out with the morning dose, we've, we've said, Hey, listen, let's talk to your doctor and see about just adding in that morning dose. And most of the time it's, it's brought the, um, you know, the success to a, a better level just with the first edition. And, and if there's more, we would, we would continue, you know, we would just continue to taper. Maybe it's in a little bit in the morning and it's still possible to increase the evening dose too. So, um, it ends up all being individual, but that's kind of the general thought. So, um, so, okay. Well, um, so thanks, um, for all of you that joined us today. Um, I know everyone's probably sitting around home a lot now with everything going on too. So, so maybe, you know, hopefully this wasn't as boring as all the other stuff we've been doing to stay busy. But we have actually the pharmacy's been open for all the uh, all all of you you know you may, most of you maybe know that. So we're open at regular hours. We're uh, we're doing a lot of mail outs um, now for those that not wanting to come in or or we have curbside as well too. People call in the order. Um, leave a credit card, we run everything due. When they come in, they just call from the parking lot. We'll have somebody run out there. And, and we still, you know, we still have a few people that come in and pick it up, but it's you know, just a few, it's really spaced out. You know, we've got, we've got hand sanitizers and everything as you come in and at the register and stuff too. So just, uh, um, but it's pretty much just us and a few people in a day. Um, but like I said, if you have any questions or anything, email us, um, um, message us or uh, just call us directly. Everybody have a great day. Thank you.